Hi, that's some strip the blocks, and this is how to make an NPC that will chase and kill you. To create an NPC that will chill us, first of all, we will need to insert an NPC. I'm for simplicity done it be using a block rig. Now we want to insert the script and rename this to animate. And then go into the already present local animate script, Control A, Control C, and then in the script we added Control A, Control V to copy all of it. Then we're gonna use Control F and search for chat. We're gonna remove that function and we're nearly good to go. Then we are going to expand the local script that is already present and drag and drop all of the contents into the script you added. Then we're gonna remove the local script and now this NPC is animated. Now what we want to do is create the script to find target. So first of all, we're going to insert the string value which is going to be named target. And then we're going to insert a bool value which we're going to call in pursuit. Now we are going to insert a script to find our target. So we're just going to insert a script and call it get target. Next up, we're going to make some variables. First of local aggro range equals to 50. Then we're going to do wait 5 seconds so the game's probably loaded. And then we're going to do while wait 1 do every second for i comma are in pairs game that players get children do local PLR character equals to PLR the character then if PLR character in brackets dot primary part dot position minus strip dot parent dot primary parts dot position Find the brackets dot magnitude is smaller or equal to aggro range, then script dot parent dot in pursuit dot value equals to true. And also, so this basically means that every sentence it will loop through the players that uh, its character and check if it's in range. Then it's going to be in pursuit and strip dot parent dot target dot value equals to plr dot name just made it so that it knows who to target. But else, so if that's not the case, then it will do strip dot parent dot in pursuit dot value equals to false and strip dot parent dot target dot value equals to empty parenthesis. Next up, we are going to make a script to pursue the target. So to follow it. So what we are going to do is to insert yet another script into the rig and call this follow target. Then in the script, we're going to make some variables. Local players equals to game the players. Then local char equals to script the parent. Local hum equals to char dot humanoid local pathfinding service equals to game colon get service pathfinding service then while wait in, in brackets one do if script the parent dot in pursuit dot value equals equals to true then if script the parent dot target not equals to nil then local plr to chase equals to equals to players in square brackets char dot target dot value dot character behind the square brackets if plr to chase then local path equals to pathfinding service colon create path and then in these brackets, squiggly brackets, and we'll drop a line. Then we have got multiple variables to set to define how the NPC works so that it can create an optimal path for the NPC. So the first we need to define is the agent radius. And in my case, I'm using a regular block rig, so that is just three. So we'll do equals to three. 
Then we have got the agent height, which in my case is 6, so we'll just write equals to 6. We have to separate these with commas. And then after the agent height, we will have agent can jump equals to true because I want my NPC to be able to jump. And then cost, which is just to define what parts to avoid. So for instance, if you want to at all cost avoid that your NPC will go into a chill part as its path, you'd have to insert the name of this chill part there and then equals to and then as high of a cost as possible so that that is worse. So I'm just gonna have water equals to 20 for the cost and then proceed. Then behind where we define this path, we'll do path colon compute async. It would not be recommended to you by autocomplete. And then brackets. And then char dot position dot primary part dot position comma pillar to chase dot primary part dot position. So this is just going to compute a path between the enemy's position and the position of the p player that it wants to chase. Then what we want to do is make a variable for our waypoint. So local waypoints equals to path colon get waypoints, which would also not be recommended to you. So then we're going to do for i comma v in pairs waypoints do. And then we're just going to do hum colon move to v dot position. Then we're going to do hum dot move to finished colon wait brackets. Now we're going to make the script that will actually kill the target. So what we're going to do is in our rig we're going to insert yet another script and call the script attack target. Then in here we're going to get some variables. First of all local attack time equals to 2. Then local debounds equals to 1. Then also local now equals to OS the time. And also local last attack equals to 0. Local DMG equals to 10. So that's just how much damage it will do. Attack time is how long it should take for an attack. Debounds how long it has to wait after an attack. And then we'll also have a variable which is local attack range equals to 5 which is just how close it has to be to be actually able to hit the character so then we're going to do while wait in brackets 1 after do if script dot parent dot in pursuit dot value equals equals to true then if script dot parent dot target dot value is not equal to true then we're going to do local target plr equals to game dot players in square brackets script dot parent dot target dot value after the square brackets then we'll drop a line and do local target char equals to target plr dot char character then <clears throat> we're going to do local char is equal to script dot parent local char pause equals it was a char dot primary part of position local target pause equals to target char dot primary part of position local distance equals to in brackets char pause or target pause minus char pause and then after dot magnitude then we are going to check if distance is smaller or equal to attack range then attack brackets and then those brackets will do target now as you can see attack is underlined in red which means that it does not find attack because this is a function that we will make in a setting where we pass in target char so that in the function we know what our target is so what we are going to do is before all of the while wait stuff is we are going to do for the while wait one do we are going to do function attach brackets and in the brackets we're going to a target 
then after we'll drop a line it'll insert the end then what we are going to do is we're going to do local hum equals to target dot humanoid then we're going to do now equals to os dot time so that we'll update the now value to exactly when he starts to attack so now if we want to have some type of like animation we'll have it before this and now if now minus last attack is bigger or equal to debounce then so that if the last attack is longer ago than debounce in here we're going to have stuff like attack animations if we wish to have them but after that we would have wait fun attack time so how long it will take to attack and then after we will once again check we'll have to check local distance equals to in brackets target dot primary parts dot position minus scripts of parent dot primary part dot position after the brackets dot magnitude and then we're going to do if distance is smaller or equal to attack range then and now we're sure that he has done his swing and the enemy was still in range because we don't want that he's able to hit him even though the player moves out of range. So what we're going to do is now equal to OS at time to update now once again. And then we're going to do last attack equals to OS at time so that now and last attack are at the same time but as if the thing fires again then it will first check because now would be updated again if that's at all possible right now and so now what we are going to do is we're going to drop a line hum dot health minus equals to dmg so this just deducts the health of or target there's just one problem currently because our npc is currently just as fast as the player so the player will not be able to escape it so what we can do is let the humanoid scroll down and find war speed and we just have to set that a bit lower than the default for instance i'm gonna set it to 10 which makes our humanoid npc slower and that will make that the player actually has a chance of escaping him so as we can see if we test out the game all right, the NPC will first wait a second and then start running towards us. Then if we uh, if it catches us and then it can hit us. But if we as yeah, that works and if we run away after, it will not damage us, which is perfect. So, I'm Triple Blocks. This is how to make an NPC that will indefinitely chase and kill you. And I hope we see you in the next video. Bye.